Mission Guided Munitions Demonstration on December 12, 1978. Many civilian and military dignitaries and representatives from national and local press were transported to Cedar Site for the showing. The purpose of the demonstration was to show the American public through the press the effectiveness of U.S. laser and video-guided weapons systems, some of which are still developmental. Secretary of Defense Dr. Harold Brown, plus approximately 90 of his guests, attended the demonstration. They viewed the 11 static displays, five of which were hot-fired. Each display was manned by an expert able to answer technical questions posed by the press and dignitaries. Following administrative remarks, Major General O.L. Tobias and White Sands Commander and Dr. William Perry, Under Secretary of Defense for Research and Engineering, spoke briefly on the meanings of the test. All targets for the hot firings were located on the desert floor and were visible from the viewing stands. To explain the tests and static displays, each of the four services provided a narrator. Major James Gavin was the Army narrator. His first briefing was on the cannon-launched guided projectile known as Copperhead. This included live firings at static and moving tank targets. The Copperhead was fired from a 155-millimeter self-propelled howitzer. The first target, a stationary M47 tank, was located three miles from the firing point. The laser designator, which guided the projectile to target, was in front of the viewing stand. Another view of the first impact. The laser designator locked on the second target, a moving remotely piloted M47 tank. It fired to a direct hit. The next PGM demonstrated was the TOW, or tube-launched, optically-tracked, wire-guided missile. The TOW was launched from a Cobra attack helicopter. This Cobra was part of a five-helicopter tank-killing team on hand. The TOW target, a stationary tank, suffered a direct hit. The small hole in the tank's turret was made by the TOW's 8.6-pound shaped charge warhead. This relatively small hole is more than enough to knock out a tank. Other Army systems discussed included the Hellfire and Stinger missile systems. The Air Force narrator, Captain James Seif, breathed three PGMs. The first was the Air Force Maverick, an air-to-surface bomb used against small, hard targets like tanks. The first Air Force system to be demonstrated was a GVU-15 with a television guidance system. The target for the GVU-15 was a vehicle representing a radar van. It was protected by a seven-foot dirt embankment. To record test data, optical instrumentation was used. An Air Force F-4 aircraft flying 150 feet above the ground at a speed of 580 knots approached the target. At the launch point, the Phantom pulled up into a shallow climb and released the GBU-15. At launch, the weapon systems operator in the aircraft had not yet acquired the target. As the bomb climbed to altitude, the weapon systems operator began to search for the target with the GBU-15's television picture, which was data linked to the aircraft. Once the target is located, all the operator had to do was keep the crosshairs on his display unit on the target. The data link enabled the bomb to adjust its course to the target. Here's a bird's eye view from the nose of the GBU-15. The weapon systems operator saw the same thing. This system provided one round kill capability.
but GBU-15 successfully found its target. The next item demonstrated was the Air Force GBU-12, or laser-guided bomb. Four 500-pound bombs were dropped from another F-4 Phantom. The target was a fuel storage tank filled with contaminated fuel. The bombs were released in a pull-up maneuver similar to the preceding drop. A second jet designated the target with a laser beam. Laser detectors in the bombs locked down the reflected energy. A computer in each bomb processed information about the angular relationship between the bomb's flight path and the target. The computer sent commands to the bomb's fins to guide the bomb to target. Watch the bombs carefully to see them maneuver into position as they align themselves with the target. Here it is again in slow motion. The Air Force calls this a shack, or destruction of target. Although the Marines had no live demonstration, Lieutenant Colonel O.C. Baker briefed their version of the Laser Maverick. The Navy's Lieutenant Commander, Robert Kaepernick, briefed the HARM, or High Speed Anti-Radiation Missile System, and the Harpoon, an anti-ship over the horizon missile. Following the missile briefing, the walleye-guided glide bomb was demonstrated. The target was the camouflaged van opposite the bright white van. Using the mountains as a screen, a Navy A-7 jet approached the target. In a move similar to the Air Force's, the Navy jet performed a pull-up maneuver while dropping the 2,000-pound walleye. A second A-7 used its TV data link to follow the flight path of the bomb. When a course change was needed, the second aircraft's pilot readjusted the crosshairs on his video display unit. The bomb consequently changed its course to glide toward the target. When the bomb was first dropped, it locked down the white van and not the intended target. The pilot was able to adjust the bomb's flight path so it hit the intended camouflaged van. Got follow to the vessel impact. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Target impact. As can be seen, the course correction was successful. The walleye destroyed the intended target. Following the demonstration, the Secretary of Defense held a press conference outdoors at Cedar Site. Because of PGM's successes, Dr. Brown stressed the need for additional funds to continue their development. He said they could be an effective deterrent in Europe.